This video is all about muscle car royalty. We're talking Yenko, Copo, all of the big names as far as high performance special edition muscle cars. And they all came to play at the Supercar Reunion. This is an annual event held in Bowling Green, Kentucky. It's a two day deal. They come in on Friday to Beach Bend Raceway Park and make drag racing passes with these absolutely rare, some one of a kind muscle cars. And then on Saturday, they go into the National Corvette Museum into a banquet hall and they set up the cars and they all just basically bench race all day. It is an amazing gathering of cars and I couldn't show them all to you, but I'm gonna show you some of my favorites. I think you're gonna like this. We're starting things off with a Camaro that looks like it came straight out of the 70s. You'll notice the modified production markings on the window and you see sort of a modified hockey stick stripe on there. Old school decals, Craig SS wheels, big block with a dominator and white headers. This thing is really cool, but it truly has huge significance. This is a true Copo Camaro from 1969. Now I'm a huge fan of day two style cars. So day one would be how the car rolled off the showroom floor. Day two is the second day of ownership when a hot rodder has his hands on it and he puts a set of aftermarket valve covers on it, puts an aftermarket breather, maybe a set of headers, some traction bars, Krager wheels, stuff like that. Stuff that's not majorly intense as far as modifications are concerned, but just peri correct old school components. And this car is an absolute perfect example of it. This is a 1969 Chevrolet Chevelle 300 Deluxe. Now what makes it unique is that it's a 300 Deluxe with the Super Sport big block package and it's a two-door sedan. So this has got the post, it's not a hard top. This is a really rare combination. Just a little over a thousand of these cars were built and there's less than a hundred of them that are known to exist today. This one has a warranty replacement 402 big block in it with 077 aluminum heads, Muncie M22 four speed, 456 gears in the 12 bolt rear end, and it's got a lot of really neat period correct components from the 1970s. Here's another day two build, and this one is extremely special. This is actually a Copo 1969 Camaro, and it was special ordered with this color combination. It's black on the outside, and you'll see on the inside in just a moment why this is so special. But look at how slick that paint job is. Absolutely flawless. It's got slotted mags on it, big old Goodyear polyglass tires, and look on the inside of this thing. It's got bright yellow houndstooth interior. It is one of one, the only one ever ordered in this combination. And some might say that that yellow is a little bit wild, but when you see the overall look of this car, I mean, can't you picture this thing in the late 60s or early 70s cruising the boulevard? I mean, this thing is killer. And when you look under the hood, it's got some Cal Custom finned aluminum valve covers, not a whole lot of custom pieces under the hood, but it does have cyclone headers on it with thrush mufflers and it's got a Mallory ignition in it. Underneath, it's got Lakewood traction bars and Cure Ride shocks. I mean, this thing is 100% period correct and it's absolutely the only one of its kind. So here's another 69 Camaro, this time a Yenko 427 that came from Francis Chevrolet in St. Louis, Missouri. And look at this, how often do you see a Yenko Camaro with a set of slicks bolted to the back of it? This is so cool to see these cars and especially to see them running down the track. Now, unfortunately, I didn't get any video of them running because I was there on assignment from Hemings Motor News to photograph this event, uh, actually for the Hemings Muscle Machines title. So, you know, I had a job to do. These videos that I took here were just in the pits. Didn't really have a lot going on in between fun runs and rounds, so I was able to walk the pits and show you some of these cars like this awesome Yenko Camaro. Now, it's gonna be hard to top the overall combination on this Camaro. The stripes, the colors, the stance, the tires and wheels, 
And that's how this car came. This is a motion phase three Camaro. And that means it got the 454 ZLX is what they called it. 575 horsepower, turbo 400 transmission, 12 bolt rear end with 410 gears. This thing had some serious stuff on it. It had an L88 style hood that was fiberglass that lifted off. It came with tons of really high end parts like Coney shocks. I mean, it had everything, headers, side pipes. It had everything you could ever want in one awesome package. And this one is restored to perfection. All right, you guys know that I love old drag cars and this one is extra special. And I heard some of the story while I was there and I hope to dig a little deeper on this car and do a full video on it soon. But this is a 1969 Camaro, a Copo car, big block, had all the right stuff from back in the day. And amazingly, this thing only has 15,000 miles on it and has all of its original equipment. But it was actually a drag car, a super stock car in the early 70s. It raced in Ohio and somehow, some way, this car didn't get cut up or turned into something else through the years. And luckily this car ended up in great hands. The research and the restoration of this car is absolutely flawless. I mean, every detail down to the decal placement, the stance, the tires and wheels, the engine combination, all of this is just like it was in the early 70s. But the real story behind this thing goes a lot deeper. This is a factory Copo car. This thing has drag racing history. This thing has personal histories with all of the families that it's been through in its life. And I'm going to tell you more about that in a future video. I'm looking forward to digging deeper into the history of this car. Now, as far as appearance goes, this 69 Camaro had to be my favorite. Hugger orange with a black vinyl top, no stripes, nothing fancy as far as that's concerned, but I love the stance, the skinny Kragers and the fat Kragers and the traction bars on the back. And then under the hood, it's got a big block, of course. This is actually a factory Copo car. Then it's all documented. It's a very nicely restored car, but it has these day two components, those coated headers, the Mickey Thompson valve covers. It's got just the right amount of stuff. And then you look inside, it's got a wide interior and check out that Don Garlitz tack that's strapped onto the steering column. This thing is full of period correct goodies and it's just got a killer overall look. Now here's something I've never seen before and there's actually two of them sitting side by side. These are actually 1968 Chevy 2 Novas. Both of them are Fred Gibb prepared cars. That means that these cars were not only Copos, they also had the special treatment from Fred Gibb. The one we're looking at here was also a Dick Harrell car. So it's like triple awesome. It's got the Copo treatment, the Fred Gibb treatment, the Dick Harrell treatment. It is absolutely one of the rarest Chevrolets I've ever laid my eyes on. It's got a 427. I can't even imagine what type of price tag would be on a car like this if it were to ever be up for sale. I really love a true survivor and this is it. This is about as good as it gets as far as survivors are concerned. This is a 1973 Camaro and this is a Yenko Camaro that looks identical to the one in this advertisement that they have displayed with the car. It's got huge fender flares on it and actually the whole front end is fiberglass to save weight and to be able to give you those big flares and the scoops in the side of the fenders. I mean, there's a lot of custom details just in the front end. Then of course, it's got a custom hood on it and then matching fender flares on the back and they are massive flares. So you can hold a giant set of tires and wheels on this thing. And from what I can tell, the only thing that they've replaced on this car are the tires and wheels. It has a semi-modern set of slotted mags on it and then some modern BFG radial TA tires. But otherwise, this car appears to be completely untouched. Along with the appearance package, these things had a killer big block in them. Now standard was a 427 rated at 410 horsepower. That had a hydraulic cam. You know, it was a pretty modest setup. 
but then you could actually option up to a 450 horsepower version, which is what this car has. It's got aluminum heads, solid lift cam. It's got a turbo 400 automatic transmission in it. This thing is equipped with the best of everything. And what's really cool about it to me is that it's not been restored. The old green paint is still hanging in there. It's rough and it's cracked and it's weathered, but you can only be original once. And if you take all that down to the bare metal or the bare fiberglass, you know, you're talking about a huge restoration project that would yield big money, but it doesn't have that wow factor of the original paint from 1973. I saved the best drag car for last. Now this is a 1967 Camaro. It's called Mr. Outlaw and it was based out of New York. It raced at tracks like Dover Drag Strip and other New York tracks and it was a pro stock car back in the early 70s. Pro stock didn't come out until the 70s so this car probably raced uh, maybe in super stock or modified production before then. But just look at this lettering. The lettering is still intact and look at all the details here. I mean, just tons of great lettering, and that original paint is still holding up extremely well. Obviously, this car's been inside lots and lots of years. You can see they've flared those rear quarter panels out. It's got some big slicks and Kragers on there, and look at that pro stock designation up there on the sail panel. It's got a roll bar in there, but otherwise, the interior is mostly stock looking. You can see the tack strapped onto the steering column and a couple more gauges under the dash. The four-speed shifter sticking up. Check out that rowdy hood scoop. I mean, this thing is just the complete package. Now, I didn't see anybody that appeared to be the owner of this car. Anytime I was around it, it was always on the trailer the whole time. So I'm looking into this, and I really want to be able to shoot a full video, show you guys the full history of this outstanding Survivor. So that's it from the 26th Annual Supercar Reunion in Bowling Green, Kentucky. This is the first time I've ever been to this event, but it won't be the last. What an awesome collection of really high dollar, rare, one of a kind, in some cases, muscle cars. And I wanted to show you guys some of my favorites, and maybe next year when I go back, I'll show you some more.